In this lesson, we're going to go through graphing and writing equations of translated hyperbolas. Before we get into the detail, let's review uh, the equations for hyperbolas based on their uh, transverse axis orientation. So we said again that the orientation of the axis uh, for the hyperbola is going to determine the equation and also the slope of the asymptotes. In the case where we have a horizontal transverse axis, our equation is going to be x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared, where h and k are the center of the hyperbola. a is the distance from the center to the vertices. And then the slope would be b plus or minus b over a, or we'll call the point b the covertex, but actually it just helps us find the slope in a line that uh, represents the asymptote. The other equation is based on a transverse axis which is vertical, so I have a parabola going up and down, or two parabolas up and down, or two branches of the hyperbola going up and down. In this case it's y minus k squared over a squared minus h x minus h squared over c squared is equal to 1 where a again is just the distance between the center of the hyperbola and the vertices. In this case now I'm running along the y-axis, but in all cases I'm running along the transverse axis. So in this case I move a units up and a units down along the transverse axis, and in the case where the transverse axis is horizontal I move a units to the left and a units from the right from the center. Okay, so let's go back to our steps for graphing a, a hyperbola, and we're going to walk through a, an example. The first step is to determine uh, the transverse axis, and we're going to figure out whether or not it's vertical or whether it's oriented horizontally. So let's take a look at this first equation. I have y minus 2 squared over 16 minus x minus 2 squared over 9 is equal to 1. So I can see that because the value uh, for the positive variable in this case is y. I know, that the, uh, I know that the transverse axis is going to be vertical. My second step is to identify the coordinates for the center of the hyperbola. And all I'm doing is I'm just identifying the h and k values. So the h value associated with the x, k value associated with the y. I know that the h value is 2 and the k value is 2 based on the formula. So I plot my center which is 2, 2, and then I'm also going to draw my transverse axis. And By the way, I can also provide the equation for the transverse axis. It's going to be x is equal to 2. My third step is to identify the coordinates for the vertices and plot them. So remember, the vertices are based off of the a value, and the a value is underneath the positive squared value here. So the a value corresponds to 16. It's, 16 is a squared. So I know that a is going to be plus or minus 4. So now along the transverse axis, I'm going to move 4 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4. I have a vertex of 2, 6. And I'm going to move 4 units down. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I have a vertex of 2, negative 2. Now I've identified the coordinates for my vertices, and I've plotted them. The next step is to calculate the equations for the asymptotes and draw them. But really the simpler process I think is just to take the slope of uh, the asymptotes and then plot them from, plot the lines from the center. So I have my center and what I've done here is I've counted four units up and three units across. I've counted four units up and three units to the left. I've counted four units down and three units to the left and four units down and three units to the right. And these give me the points through which I can draw my asymptotes. So really it's easier just to start from the center and to identify the points which are four units down uh, or up and three units to the right or left and or left and then draw your asymptotes through those points. Second to last I'm going to identify the foci. Now this isn't so important for graphing but it's important to know um, in terms of the function and the form of the hyperbola. So recall that the uh, formula for the c value is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And remember this differs 
from the equation for the c value for the ellipse, which is c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So I have a squared 16 plus b squared 9. 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. c squared is equal to 25, where c is equal to plus or minus 5. Now remember the c value, again, is just the distance from the, ver from the center along the transverse axis going into the hyperbola. So I'm moving 5 units up, and now my equation is 2, 7. I started at 2, uh, 2, 2 as my center. I move 5 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm now at 2, 7. Now at coordinate 2, 7, now I move 5 units down along the transverse axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I have my second focus of 2, negative 4. And finally, I'm just going to graph the branch of the, of the parabola, knowing that uh, these values here, 2, 6, and uh, 2, negative 2, I believe, um, are the vertices of the uh, branches of the hyperbola. And then I just graph from there. So as a recap, let's walk through the steps. First, I determined the orientation of the transverse axis. I determined it was vertical in this case. Second, I plot the center. Center equates to the values of h and k, h being with x, k being with y. In this case, I've also drawn my transverse axis. Third is identify the a value. A value is the distance from the center along the transverse axis in both directions to the vertices, and I've identified my coordinates for the vertices. Fourth step is to draw the asymptotes based on the slope that's provided as part of the formula moving uh, A units up and down and B units to the left and right to plot four different points and then drawing my asymptotes in between those points. Next, plotting the focus, the foci, using the C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared value. I determine that C squared is equal to 25, so C is equal to plus or minus 5. Lastly, I simply drew the branches of the hyperbola and I'm um, done.